Speaking of fighting, Shingo Takagi versus John Moxley in a no DQ match. Mm-hmm. And man, no DQ doesn't do this justice. This was a death match here on New Japan Strong. And uh, like literally, they brawl outside for about three seconds, and Shingo just pulls out a pair of sticks and tosses one to Moxley, and then it's just a garbage match all the way through. <laughs> To the point where, uh, after Moxley cuts him off with a trash can lid to the head, which is important, then he puts a garbage can on Shingo, causing or, 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 or uh, inspiring the female Japanese announcer, who's been speaking in Japanese the entire show, to just say, this is pure garbage! <laughs> and she's not wrong. And then, uh, so he hits the, he, Moxley puts the can on Shingo, hits the can with a stick, takes the can off Shingo, breaks the stick... Proceeds to stab Shingo in the eyeball and mouth, basically doing plastic surgery on his face with a stick. And uh, the announcers go back to you sick fuck before the crowd even does. And uh, <laughs> Moxley has him in like a cross face thing. And there's shards of the stick everywhere. And so Shingo grabs a shard of stick and tries to stab Moxley in the dick. But Moxley blocked him, as anyone would. And uh, is just cutting him up and working him over. And then... Uh, Moxley takes over briefly, but when he tries to dive, Shingo hits him with a trash can lid. The trash can lid is what always works. Moxley is bleeding everywhere, and while selling, attempts to headbutt some blood onto the camera lens. Didn't really work, but it was a great idea. And, uh, that's trading big moves, trading headbutts, trading lariats, trading suplexes, more lariats. Uh, Moxley has a paradigm shift, and Shingo pops up, does some sort of attack. They're both down for a while. Uh, there's more garbage thrown in. The announcers are talking about the ECW arena. The crowd is chanting for tables. The announcers are laughing at them openly. Like, I don't speak Japanese, but I'm sure they thought, why the hell would you care about tables and all this other violence is going on? We have, uh, Moxie grabs a chair to block it, and Shingo somehow, like, snaps his fingers with the chair. Hits a chain-assisted lariat for two. Shingo then gets the tables. Everyone loves that. Uh, <laughs> Moxley cuts him off. Lays him across the table, crosses himself, and then goes through the table with an elbow. I'm not a pig. John Moxley is a man of the Lord, but what do I know? Then he puts another table in the ring. And this has been like a lot of fun. I, I, wouldn't, say, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say to this point it has been a great match, but it's been a lot of carnage and bloodshed and warfare, and it's fun. Then John Moxley goes up top, but Shingo cuts him off. And I don't know if I've ever seen Shingo use the green mist before. Maybe it's a regular thing. I just haven't paid attention. But he blows green mist on John Moxley, and Moxley sure was not expecting it. And watching John Moxley sell this mist, he was in agony. He was also drowning and could not breathe. He was also blinded and trying to fight this guy, throwing fists in the air. It was the greatest mist spot you ever saw. And uh, that's just been Avalanche DVD through a table, a power bomb, which is two for Shingo. Last of the Dragon onto a chair gets two. Mox comes back, gets a curb stomp, and the Death Rider. But Shingo kicks out, and the place is going insane. Insane, I tell you. So they continue to go back and forth. Uh, Shingo powers out of a... <laughs> it was actually quite awesome. Moxley goes the, the, gets the sleeper on, or is a rear naked choke, whatever you call it. Shingo is a big, strong dude. Powers up in like an angle slam position. But Moxley just slips back behind him, suplexes him onto his head, knees him in the head, Shingo kicks out at one, Moxley don't care, King Kong Lariat, Death Rider on a chair, finish. You can tell, again, I don't speak Japanese, but just from the tone, the announcers are begging Shingo to just stay down, and he finally did. And uh, I don't know if this needed to go all 25 minutes, but the last 10 minutes or so were great. God damn great, it, sure great, did. Great, great, great. This match was absolutely fucking great. And uh, this and the main event were both absolutely fucking great in absolutely completely different <laughs> like ways. Like mirror opposite ways. And, uh, you know, if you, what was the better match? I don't know, probably the main event, who knows. But what was my favorite match? It was this one here. And uh, not only that, it's like, I've seen some version of Okada and Osprey many times. Always great. This was a great, great version of that match. But it was a, it was like a great wrestling match. And uh, And this was just like, this was something special because it had all of the craziness. It was a first ever match, John Moxley and Shingo. You know, I've seen a million great Shingo matches, but now he's in a no DQ hardcore match with fucking kendo sticks and shit. I mean, the near falls at the end, you know, the way they time the one counts and the place is just going crazy. I loved this match. Loved it. 
And this Moxie afterwards, this guy is no gimmick. He no. is fired up. He just had the fucking time of his life. Yeah. And he can't contain himself. He's he's just like, he's out of control. And then he does his promo, challenges Naito. They're facing off at the Windy City Showdown or whatever it's called, coming up in uh, in April. Windy City Riot. Windy City Riot. Yes. God damn, I'd like to go to that, but I'll be gone. Mm. But uh, holy shit, this was a great match, great post-match promo, you know? Wow. I'm not sure why when two wrestlers each have a kendo stick apiece. I don't know why it turns into Darth Vader against Ben Kenobi, but uh, it's uh, kind of a trope that's uh, always funny. I'm probably overthinking this, but when Shingo sprayed the mist into John's face, it got all over his uh, head that was already bleeding. And um, his whole face and head were covered with this green mist. And I'm I'm not saying this is what happened, but this is what happened. John um, went up and scrubbed his forehead and got all the black off so you could make sure he was still bleeding. This guy's a, a, a bleeding pro. He, he knows. By the way, the uh, Okada Osprey match, Vinny can review it, but uh, right. as I look through this here, now I now I understand as I look at my notes why I I thought that the uh, Moxley-Shingo match was better, and that was if you watch the Moxley match, like the fans are, I mean, they're going pretty nutty at the beginning because they're just using gimmicks and having a sword fight and shit like that, but uh, the match peaks at the end. I That's mean, for sure. It absolutely peaked at the end of the match. And if you watch the Okada Osprey match and you listen to the crowd, there is a point where it peaks very close to the end. And then they go a little longer mm-hmm. and they I, they didn't lose the crowd, but they lost the the peak. And the finish was uh anticlimactic. And as a result of that, I think that the the Moxley Shingo match was better because they hit the peak, and that was it. That was the end. And these guys hit a peak, a big peak, by the way. I mean, the match was fantastic. But then they had to do a few extra things, and the crowd was tired. And they they kind of they lost them a little bit. So, yeah, great match, though. So as you mentioned, Okada and Osprey was great in a totally different way. We certainly agree on that point. Uh, I made this comment about Brian Danielson one match once about how... Uh, they went to commercial during his his match. I thought, wow, there's a fast commercial. It's only like two minutes in. I looked down and realized I've been wrestling for ten minutes. <laughs> this was kind of like that. They do five minute announcements every five minutes at New Japan. They will tell you five minutes has gone by, and it's that's a shoot. It's it's five minutes, goddammit. it. And uh, that's the only reason I knew we were like fifteen plus minutes into this match because at that point I was like, they've done practically nothing. It has been awesome. <laughs> It's just been great wrestling. Like, there was a DDT here or there and a couple of big moves on the floor, a phenomenal forearm. But, man, over 15-plus minutes, that's, that, that's like the, the coolest stuff they did. But everything they did was so great, it didn't matter. Uh, it did pick up at intensity at that point. Okada has a tombstone on the floor, gets uh, the top rope elbow, the Rainmaker pose, and he he hit, I don't know, like a half dozen Rainmakers more here uh, in this match. And uh, Osprey obviously kicked out of most of them. Uh, and he's down in the corner. Okada's just grinding him down in the corner like he did to the Danielson in the Wrestle Kingdom match for a while. And uh, they start to go back and forth. They're trading big moves. And it's big moves of New Japan stars past, like the Styles Clash. Uh, they tease a V trigger, though I don't think they ever deli- delivered, delivered it. And then they start to hit each other's moves. Okada gets a Stormbreaker for two. Uh, we're 20 minutes in, I think it was the first time that the Rainmaker actually lands for the first time. And people actually thought that might be the finish at a mere 20 minutes in. So Okada's obviously been uh, in Japan for his entire career. He's, he's, well, he's in TNA. But uh, he has worked for a U.S. audience before, but not like in a high profile. I wrestled, wrestled, uh, Forbidden Door. He doesn't work for the U.S. that often, for U.S. audiences that often. And he got to do a U.S. style shocked kickout face for the rare occasion. And man, he packed an entire career's worth of shocked kickout face into this one moment. It was a big deal. And then I'm not even really sure why, but he starts to flip off the crowd, but the crowd picked up on it. They're chanting fuck Okada. 
And uh, for, then it's it's you know the, the the crowd was into both guys, and then they have changed their minds. They are 100 percent behind Osprey, 100 percent hating Okada. They're doing the boo yay spots, which you never see in a New Japan main event like that. And uh, Osprey does the rainmaker pose. Unfortunately, the cameraman was not smartened up into the zoom. And we talk all the time about how uh, Okada has like the best drop kick ever, and part of it is because he always hits it when you're not expecting it. The other part is just a great drop kick, but. Uh, Osprey did his drop kick in this match, and it's Osprey. It's a better drop kick. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it but you know is. what? I I watch a million Okada matches, and I'd say in ninety percent of them, I know right when that drop kick is coming. But man, they did this match here, and there was a couple I never even saw coming. But that was it. He did like three drop kicks in this match. I think it was by the third one was near the end. Yeah. And that's when the crowd, they didn't react big to the drop kick on the third try. Might be, might be. There was one actually where he went for it. He he whips Osprey into the ropes. And he goes to the big ass drop kick. And, and Osprey's running as fast as he can. And he bounces off those ropes. And he, without breaking stride, catches Okada in midair with a power bomb. Yeah. It looks so killer. So, uh, let's see. Okada tries a rainbreaker. Osprey turns into a stormbreaker. That gets to... He tears off that elbow pad. He's going to do the hidden blade and win. But the hidden blade meets the dropkick. I think that was the last one. That may have been the one you're talking about there. And uh, uh, let's see. Osprey is the no-selling rainmakers. And so Okada just chops him down and chops him down and chops him down. Lays him out with heavy rain. One more final rainmaker. He gets the three count. A tremendous main event here to cap off Battle of the Valley. So, I watched. I skimmed. I skimmed the post match. The War Dogs attack Osprey, Finley and crew, Jeff Cobb and TJP and Eddie Kingston all make the save, and uh, that's that. And then and uh, Osprey then cut a long, long promo. I did not watch much of that. Well, he just talked about. He basically did a, a you know goodbye to New Japan promo, put over Okada as the greatest of all time, and then uh, plugged the big match which is coming up for uh, New Japan February 11th cave ma- uh, cage match. Where he promised to, uh, he said, if you don't like violence and blood and the sound of breaking bones and tearing tendons, Mm. don't watch. But if you're a sick little fucker like me, let's take that piss ant bullet club and fucking bury it. And everybody goes crazy. And that's the build to the cage match. So show was awesome. I mean, if there's a better show in uh, in 2024, it's going to be a goddamn great show. Let me tell you that. Every single match on the show was was good to very good to great to awesome. So that's saying something. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.